this is, this is, this is. All right, it's a bright and sunshiny day out there. Um, cars are driving around. Everybody's doing their thing, you know. It's, it's, I don't even know what day it is. It's Thursday. I'm recording this on a Thursday. Um, so check it out. This is a voicemail episode. Thanks for sending in your voicemails. I didn't even check. I haven't even checked it super recently. I'm using some voicemails that I didn't get to yet. From, they're from this month, though, earlier this month. Um, actually, by the time this comes out, it's going to be July. So never mind. They're from, <laughs> from June. I don't think that makes this uh, any less important or urgent or any more urgent, for that matter, because it's clearly not. But um, thanks for tuning in to the podcast, My Career Podcast. Uh, many times I have guests Many of these episodes I have guests and we talk about whatever pressing matters uh, are, are happening at the time. Mostly it's usually music and songwriting and process and, and, and the business side of, of what we do. But living a creative life is really what, what I like to talk about. And um, I think that's it changes over time a little bit, you know, as, as I change as a person. But... But I think what happens is I just more things get tacked on. Like it's not like I all of a sudden like to talk about TV. You know, I've just talked about TV a few times. You know, here and there on the podcast. But um, I often wonder if my podcast was was called like something else. Would it be perceived as something else? Yeah, and the answer is probably yeah, it would be. Um, but this just seemed like this is literally a place where I can just go and do anything I want to do with, you know, that could be interview a guest about their life, about their tactics, about whatever they're doing right now. Um, you know, and then of course, just what I'm doing right now, you know, like right now I'm procrastinating, uh, doing this job on a base. I've got this base that, um, it's pretty new and I need to not need to, well, normally with my the bass guitars I use, I put I change out buttons and I put strap locks on them. Um, I use Ernie Ball Super Locks, and I not only do that, but I have had on on the last couple basses that I've been playing live, I have the the buttons countersunk the locks this the the strap locks are countersunk into the wood, and um, I should probably, I can grab a base. Hold on, hold on. I wasn't planning on this being a video episode, but maybe I'll put this on YouTube. So basically, if you're watching, you can see this, but if not, if not I'll just try to describe it. So um, the horn of my base, which is like the cutaway part where, um, where you can slide your, your hand up the neck and get all the way up because there's a cutaway. Well, on the top, there's a horn, and that's where you put, you know, the top strap lock. And that button part of the strap lock is actually countersunk into the wood. Now, this is an example of a first run, so it's not actually flush, but the second run that we did, everything was like completely flush. But this one's just, it's slightly out, but it's like barely there. It's like a little nub. So the idea there is just cleaner lines, cleaner everything, um, less chance of breaking your your base. Like when you hit the bottom, if you ever like were to drop it or throw it or drop it or whatever, you hit the bottom. That, that for many of my, of my bases, I've gotten bent uh, strap knobs it's hard like i'm having a hard time like deciding what to call them are they they're strap locks but they're knobs they're like buttons they're they're you know these these metal things that your strap goes onto. but when you have a strap lock version there's um you know a mechanism that that ties onto and screws onto your strap and then there's a, a post that comes out and that goes into the button and, and locks in there. And the only way to get it out is by 
by pinching the outside of the, the uh, strap lock on your strap, and then that disengages or it moves two little pins inside the post, and then that makes you able to like pull out the pin and there you go there's your you're unlocking the strap lock so yeah i love i love using strap locks and and the ernie ball ones are beautiful because they're just so they're so simple um and you know there's other other brands for sure but um you know obviously i'm an ernie ball guy so if they have a product chances are it's superior they have um they have like quarter inch cables, just instrument cables. They've got like all the, like so really nice products, really nice. They've got the, these different like effects pedals. Um, I don't even have everything that they, they sell. They, they sell so much stuff. But anyway, I just, I've been putting off, the whole point of me even talking about this bass thing is I've been putting off the, uh, doing this job, doing this to uh, a new bass that I have that I, I need to to do that for, but the reason I'm putting it off is because there's always a chance of of screwing it up, you know. And these bases cost like twenty five hundred bucks, you know. They're they're not ex they're not cheap. They're 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 really well made, and the the not only are they made with really really good uh, materials, but they're made by professional like artists that like build these things so i i wouldn't have that's why i get nervous when i'm gonna go drilling into somebody's somebody's uh handiwork and life work and and uh i respect this these instruments a lot so that being said that's why i'm, I'm procrastinating but uh mxpeaks.com i will be getting i'm gonna i'm gonna do some leg work soon very soon and uh I'll get back to you on on mxpeaks.com and, and stuff in the store. So, all right. That being said, welcome to July. Well, is it? Let, let me see something. Let me see something. Um, July. It's it's going to be... It's the 4th of July. It's the 4th of July today. I just look... <laughs> Everybody knows I record these podcasts like the week before, and then I put them out on Monday. So uh, this is Thursday before the Monday, and uh, I just realized it's coming out on the 4th of July. So happy 4th of July. Uh, most people probably don't listen, you know, exactly like right when it comes out. If you do, thank you. Thanks for listening. Um, but happy 4th of July. It's notoriously um, a day that you don't sit around and listen to podcasts. Most people will go out, turn on their favorite music. So thanks for listening to MXPX. Um, thanks for listening to Punk Rock. And, you know, get out, get outside if the weather's decent. And, um, I, you know, I'm no different. I like to get outside on the 4th of July as well. Uh, take the family out down at the beach. Uh, this, my, my son's birthday's coming up soon this weekend. Uh, meaning last weekend it, it, it was nice <laughs> but it's coming up and uh so we've got a, a cool morning plan for that and and we'll spend all day but yeah it, it's uh it's gonna be fun all right let's get to these voicemails what do you say what do you say here we go let's find the voicemails here we go first one what's up mike my name is albert i'm from houston texas been uh Huge MXPX fan since I was about 11. Actually, the third song I ever learned how to play on bass was Chick Magnet, and it was like the coolest thing ever. To this day, still, still good stuff. But uh, I have a couple questions. So I've been really into this band called Turnstile and their new album called Glow On. I don't know if you've listened to that or if you're if you've checked out that band or not band, but the artist. Oh God. With that second one, he must be driving. Or if you're, if you've checked out that band or not band, but the artist, oh God. God. Well, obviously, I don't know what he said exactly on that second one, um, so I don't think I've checked them out. Thanks for calling in, Albert. Man, uh, Houston, Houston is. Uh, 
a place I used to go a lot more. My some of my family used to live down there. My my married family, my in laws, uh, and so I would go down there for holidays. Um, always enjoyed just spending some time down in Houston. So it's uh, and most people don't have a lot of good to say about it because it's so hot and it is. But if you live in Texas, you know it. Everywhere is pretty hot. Uh, turnstile, yeah, yeah. I've checked them out. They they they're doing great. Their album sounds awesome. Um, their live shows, uh, they they seem to go off. I haven't seen them live. Um, they probably have come to Seattle. I just or or even you know Austin or, or Dallas or whatever. I just haven't caught them. But um, that's usually usually if they if they stick around, I'll see them eventually for sure for sure. Um, but uh, let's see who am I. I who am I been listening to lately? I can't think of anybody, to be honest. Um, I uh, can't think of anybody because I have been working on some MXPX stuff and been writing, been uh, refreshing my memory, working on on some stuff that's already, you know, just like remembering our songs, practicing. So... But Turnstile, you know, I see their videos online. It sounds great, man. It's, it's uh, they, they have a cool style, and and it's 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 definitely. I mean, it's like like MXPX. You know, we we came from loving the Descendants and Black Flag and and the Circle Jerks, and you know, and then you you know the Clash, the Ramones, all of those those bands were huge influences. Even into I would say even like a little No Effects and rancid and you know the, those all all of those bands had an effect on us in some way green day um but uh you know you kind of find your own style and i think turnstile has kind of done that you know they added in a lot of uh modern sounds you know like little samples that they put in there that's not something that's new i mean a lot of bands have been doing that for years and years but um you know just doing it in their own way, I think is what probably sets them apart. Let's go on to the next one. Let's see what else we got. Hey, Mike. Uh, I'm a big fan. Love your band, and I have since junior high school. And I'm wondering, how come you guys have never played Riot Fest? They just announced the bands again this year, and I feel like you guys would be a perfect fit for that. Um, yeah, that's all. I love the show, and keep on doing what you do. Thanks. Peace, man. All right. Riot Fest. You know, there's a lot of festivals out there, and Riot Fest is just one of those festivals. And I'm sure we would play Riot Fest if we had the right situation, the right offer. Um, we've definitely talked to them, for sure. Um, probably just hasn't worked out. And there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that never comes to fruition. And... You know, business-wise, you know, trying to trying to make something work, having something pending that goes away. Like, okay, let's save this date. Let's save this date. Oh, let's release this date. Let's release this date. So, all of those things. Now, that's not a great answer. The answer, <laughs> why? <laughs> the answer is we don't like. No, we we uh, we would. We would. We absolutely would. If we got the right offer, we would. Uh, my without going too far into the business end, I would assume, no, I'm not going to even assume. I know for a fact that they do not pay bands a lot of money to play their festival. Now, it's kind of a cool club where you just do it for less money to be part of the fest. But I imagine somebody's getting paid. So um, that's definitely part of it. Not everything, you know, a lot of it is just like the right circumstances. So uh, we love Chicago. We want to come back all the time. And we do. We, we play Chicago at least once a year, I would say. Uh, we have at least that I can remember in, in in recent memory in the last few years. Not counting the pandemic. Do we, do we count the pandemic? Not really, right? Uh, <laughs> But uh, it's tricky, though, with festivals. Like, a lot of times, um, it's just a matter of time. It's really just a matter of time. And we're not in any rush. 
And that's a, a big reason why we're not on necessarily the first years of certain things because we're like, okay, we're going to wait. We're going to wait and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I think we're doing things in the way that works for us. Uh, not always the best, but 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 we we have ideas, and then those can change. Those can change really, you know, after after time changes them, you know, because because time changes, you know, the the business always right, and at some point maybe maybe the some of the the criteria for doing certain festivals not just riot fest but other festivals that we continually turn down offers to um those might change you know and we might want to work with with uh some of these companies some of these promoters for less and but you know it's got to be it's got to be a very focused deliberate decision you know and and that means we got to talk through the pros and cons, talk through, you know, one thing that I'm not great at, but I think I've gotten better at because I talked to Tom Tuchilla about business stuff. He's, he's our, our business partner with MXPX and he, for lack of a better term, he's like our manager, but he does much more and different things than just a manager would do. And he doesn't do some of the things that a manager would do like secretarial type stuff. But, um, it's more about big vision stuff. And so like talking to him, I, you know, I've really, I've really come into realizing, okay, a good idea may, might be a good idea, but you also have to think about th the consequences of those ideas and what could happen. And, and it's not always a bad consequence. It could be great consequences, right? But consequences, things, you know, uh, an action and a reaction and you know and a lot of that is making you know artists are really good at having an idea and bringing it to the manager bringing it to the team and that creates another project another thing to do for all these people so more work essentially and if the work itself, if the project itself is a vanity project, if it's something that's not really pushing the ball forward, driving the company or the band or the brand or whatever it is you're working on forward, that breeds probably uh, ill will, you know, all these different types of feelings. It could breed contempt and ill will and, and annoyance, and, you know, and so it's it's interesting to also realize that as an artist, as somebody that's kind of like the boss guy, you know, walk into a room and people act differently than they were acting before. And it's like, what? Why? Okay. Oh, yeah, that thing. Okay. But I'm just a goofball, you know. <laughs> so, so that's very real. And um, it was a little bit of a tangent, but, but kind of fun to talk about. All right, let's go to the next one. What's uh, what's next? Hey, Mike. This is Josh from Houston, Texas. And I was calling. Houston, again. I had a question about a song off The Secret Weapon. It's one of the bonus tracks called The Hoo-Ha Jangle. And me and my buddy, we always joke around about that song. We want to know, what is The Hoo-Ha Jangle and what is it about? <laughs> Let's see. That's that's an interesting question. It's not a song I've thought about recently. Um, let me see if I have this somewhere in my... Do I have the, the lyrics? Do I have the lyrics? I have, I have the actual song.
All right. All right, so not I will admit this is not my best song and it's not my best description of what I what I'm trying to talk about, but this is about the media. This is about 24/7 news. Um it's not about the right and left media. It's just about the media in general and just about how it's it's just so much just trash constantly and you kind of get sucked into a, a certain certain sort of like ideology or whatever but it's all noise it's all kind of just junk food right the hoo-ha jangle excuse me uh that was my clever description of like uh basically a mess of noise a hoo-ha jangle i i don't remember if i made that up if i saw it somewhere i don't i don't i don't know i don't know where i came up with that to be honest but it did not make the album (laughs) <laughs> so <laughs> but it made the uh it made the the, the deluxe version i guess is, is what it did secret weapon deluxe but here's a question for you guys songs like this that aren't there's cool parts to this song like don't get me wrong at all but it's just kind of all over the place in a way that maybe is cool but my question is do you want, is it better for, for, for us never to release these like kind of like worse songs? Like, should we just never release them? Because there's plenty of songs that I've started writing that I just haven't finished because they just weren't good or it's usually because they're just not good. So I'll just quit writing and start a new idea altogether. Um, and if there's anything remotely good about the bad idea, take that little bit out and leave the rest and you'll never hear that that rest right there's nothing wrong with that am i correct that's my question like we can't give you everything because there's some stuff that's not great and and when you get everything it's harder to discern what it is you should be paying attention to and i think the hoo-ha jangle is a great example of that because if if you're getting so much news you don't really know what's when should i really pay attention when is this like breaking news when when if that beep is always going off, when is it important to pay attention, right? That do 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 breaking news. Pay attention now. Uh, the cat has just jumped over the moon, and I know it's supposed to be a cow, but I guess that's what why it's news. All right, that is that's my answer. I'm sticking to it. Here we go. Here's the next voicemail. Hey, Mike. My name is Ryan, calling from Connecticut. I was just curious as to why MXPX isn't playing Furnace Fest. I feel like they would have reached out to you guys, and I felt like MXPX would be the perfect fit this year. We've got Five Iron Frenzy and uh, Newfound Glory, Lag Wagon. Last year, Bad Cop, Bad Cop played, and the Get Up Dudes. It seems like MXPX would be the perfect fit. Uh, so curious if you're able to go into any details on that, or if maybe you'll you guys will be able to play next year. I know they're looking at maybe a four-year run of doing Furnace Fest again. Uh, and if not playing, I know they do pre-shows in Birmingham. Uh, what about maybe a MXPX karaoke night the night before Furnace Fest kicks off to, you know, have everyone that's flying in early, you know, go to a pre-show like that. Just wanted to get your thoughts. Thanks for the podcast. Yeah, this is right. Thanks for calling in, Ryan. Um, this is right in line with with what I was talking about with Riot Fest is just waiting for the right the right thing and and yes that we actually have talked to them so I don't want to say too much because as they say um, negotiations are ongoing right but I'll say that um, if we play Furnace Fest we'll play the proper Furnace Fest we'll headline it you know or or near headline it and and. Uh, MXPX karaoke sounds fun, but <laughs> but no, uh, that's something that uh, we we've done a couple times. But uh, I think I think it's not what we're what we're doing right now. So that being said, you never know, right? Like <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. Like being paid to do like what you love. There's a weird like. Should I 
if I'm not going to love what, I, what I'm doing, should I, one, feel, feel bad about that? Like, you should be loving what you're doing at all times, no matter what. Be, be grateful. Or should I be, should I be loving what I'm doing? Or should I be paid uh, way more to do things that I don't love to do, right? Like, I would rather get paid way more to do things that I love to do. Right. And then you have like literally the best of both worlds. But that's usually not the way of the world. The way of the world is if you get paid a lot of money, it's usually some terrible job that no one wants to do and only a few people can do it. And then the money goes up. Now, I think playing basketball on a, on a, you know, a championship team, you know, in the NBA, that's something that people probably love to do. It's very hard to do. Like you, you're killing yourself doing it but you still love to do it, right? Uh, but there's probably aspects of being a pro basketball player that, that some of those players hate. Like some players hate to do press. Some players probably love to do press, right? But nobody loves to do press at all times. Like when you just lost, you know, the championship or whatever, you don't want to do press, right? You, you don't feel like talking to anybody. So it always changes. So... That being said, uh, we're not playing this year. Didn't quite work out, but it doesn't mean it won't happen in the future. We'll see. We'll see. We're open to it. So, um, yeah. And, and as the world keeps on turning, you know, little circumstances and little pieces in life sometimes come into place, sometimes come out of place. So we just need we need the the furnace fests and the riot fests and the MXPXs of the world to come into place and and we'll we'll see you there. But um, we are doing a festival coming up in September, September seventeenth. Music for Cancer, it's Fest um, Four, Fest Four. Um, basically, they've been doing this. Am I right about that? Is it Fest Number Four? Um, yeah, I think I think they started doing like smaller shows, and then at, at one point it became an actual festival, like an outdoor festival where you have a stage. Goldfinger played it uh, a couple years ago, and um, they they typically have a very great lineup. Like it's punk rock bands, Canadian bands, sometimes European bands, American bands, and uh, it's in it's right outside Montreal. It's very close to Montreal in Quebec, and it's it's uh saint therese is the name of the town so it's a very small town i think there's a college there or something like that isn't there a college everywhere in canada um and it's kind of like a french like a small french village you know it's got it's got an old vibe to it um but at the same time since it's canadian it's very modern and up and kept well and everything looks nice uh, but anyway we're playing that will be there so many bands like I, I I don't have the list in front of me but it's like unwritten law gob um, I mean it's planet smashers like th though there's so many more um, but it's gonna be so much fun just this 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 one day they're doing the f a couple of days before they're doing like acoustic um, some of the bands are gonna be doing uh, at least the, the lead singers are going to be doing acoustic sets and things like that. So it's not just going to be one day, but we are just playing the main day where it's the outdoor festival where, where, and we're headlining that day. Full set. Going to be so much fun. So come on out if you're in Canada. Um, or if you're brave and you want to try to cross the border. Uh, it's kind of crazy, but come on up. Let's go. <laughs> I'll see you on the 17th of September. That's coming up sooner than I realize, and I have so much to do, not just countersinking these, uh, th my base uh, strap locks, but uh, a bunch of fly-out gear question marks that need to be filled in. Um, it's making me sweat just thinking about it. There's so much to do. So let me get, <laughs> let me get to one more voicemail, and uh, we will we'll call it. What do you say? What do you say? What do you what do you think? What do you say? Here we go. Hey Mike, it's David again. I had another question. Oh. Forgot forgot to ask it, but uh okay, uh what was it? Let me forget. 
Oh, uh, will you guys ever release uh well, will you ever release a Mike Carrera solo album? Cuz I know I know if you had stuff in the past unreleased, maybe unrecorded, I don't know. But it'd be pretty cool to hear that. And I know some uh geeks out there like I would would be uh, interested in hearing it. So uh yeah, I don't know. Be pretty cool, man. Take care. Bye. Thanks, Dave. I didn't, I don't think I played your your first message, but let's just go with this uh, solo album. Well, you know, absolutely. Um, I think at some point I will release a solo album. I've released acoustic albums. Wouldn't consider them solo albums um, because they're acoustic versions of MXPX songs, songs I wrote, but still. Um, even some cover songs, to be honest. But the most I've done of like new material releases has been a few singles. You know, I've released a couple singles. Lights Out. Um, Lights Out is one. And I strongly recommend you check it out. Go to Mike Herrera, my name, on whatever you listen to. Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, the list goes on. Um, go and, and look up Mike Herrera, my name, and a couple songs are on there, a couple albums, a couple things, but Lights Out to one of those, if you missed that release, that is a strong, I don't know, strong representation of, I think, my solo vibe, but, you know, that was a few years ago it came out, so it, that could change. Um, there's another song called New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve. It's just kind of a, it's, that's just an experiment. I think, I think the solo songs that I do will be songs that just don't quite fit with MXPX, don't fit with Tumble Down, um, or maybe are too slow for Tumble Down or too slow for MXPX. You know that kind of thing. Um, but when I don't know. I think it's going to be a little while. But I'm kind of wanting to do MXPX while I'm young <laughs> and and I assume that as MXPX slows down later in the years then then I might you know mix it in with with some solo stuff and that could change maybe I'll just do a solo album tomorrow I don't know but um but I've definitely thought about it I've definitely thought about it and and I've gone back and forth you know between okay do I do a full band out album do I do all acoustic stuff you know and I have this weird thing where I always want to be able to pull off a song live um and so if I do it full band I don't want to put too much on there but I think with the solo album the idea is to just let yourself be free let yourself just do whatever you want to do and if that means putting out some songs that I cannot pull off the same way live well, then I put up, pull them off in a different way live, right? Then I, I have a live version of that song. And I'm okay with that too. I think it's it's important to, <laughs> at this point in my, my life, not stress about it. it. You know, have fun with it. Um, it's really easy to get overwhelmed with having too many projects, too many things to do. And, and behind the scenes, a lot of what I'm doing I mean, uh, I guess a lot of people would be putting up on their, their social media, but I'm just like, I'm just going through it and doing this and that. And nobody wants to see me do this, you know? So like, maybe that's not true. Maybe maybe people want to go, go see me at the storage space. I should turn my phone on while I'm at the storage space doing stuff with merch or whatever, right? So like, um yeah, we can all get over. My my point is, is we can all get overwhelmed with all the projects we have, and and um, I don't I don't get stressed about the solo thing. I think at some point, I think I was ramping up to doing a solo record, and I tried to record a bunch of stuff, but ultimately I wasn't really happy with half-assing it. You know, what it didn't feel like I was I was kind of doing it on the side where I wasn't really like giving my full attention to it. And I think that's what it's going to take to really, truly put out a solo album is to give my full attention to it. And that's what I did when I put, put out the Tumble Down albums. And that's another thing, if you don't know about Tumble Down, you can look that up. 
tumble down on it's one word on um, you know wherever whatever you listen to music on look up tumble down um, if you can't find it add in my name Mike Herrera tumble down or something like that but it should just be tumble down um, and there's a few other bands called tumble down but we're the best one so um, it, it, as if there was any doubt right all right let's just do a couple more Let's do a couple more of these, uh, these, uh, things here. Hold on a second. Okay, let's just do one more. Because Dave, your other voicemail's right here, so I won't, I'm going to play the other one. I'm going to play the last one here. Hey, Mike. This is Evan Connor from Woodland Hills, California. <clears throat> Just calling in to say I appreciate what you guys do. <clears throat> and I was listening to some old episodes, and I heard you say that sometimes you listen to hip-hop for lyric inspiration. Well, if you do, check out this rapper named Benefit. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's above every MC like Dodger Cats, man at this point like he's nobody could touch this dude and he hasn't come out with anything for years and years he's underground as it gets um i'm a punk rocker through and through you know i but brett Berwitz has atmosphere on epitaph so that's pretty punk rock <laughs> and hip-hop at the same time um <clears throat> I just thought I'd, you know, tell you to give Benefit a listen, man. He's a sick M MC. Uh, Garbage Pale Kids would be a good uh, song to be introduced to by him. Um, yeah, man. Uh, take care. Uh, hope all is well. Hope your tour went badass. And, uh... I'll see you at your next show in California. All right. Peace. Thanks, Ivan. Anybody ever tell you you kind of sound a little like Mike Ness? Just a little bit? Um, benefit. Benefit. No, I haven't heard of them. I'll, I'll check out Garbage Pail Kids. But hip-hop in general, um, you know, for me, it's like, I'll discover a song I like, you know, hip hop, pop kind of meshes together a lot these days. Um, underground, top 40, whatever it is. Um, you know, and when, when I discover a song, all of a sudden I start hearing it everywhere. It's like, wait, was it already everywhere? And I just didn't pay attention before. Or now that I know the song, is it everywhere? You know, like it's hard to know those things. It's hard to really, you have to like constantly be testing, A, B testing things, but <laughs> can't, can't live your life like that. Um, but back to the inspiration. Yeah. I mean, I realize, I realize that, you know, everything gets in there it gets in your little psyche, it gets in your head. And Even though that's true, I still write, I still write like a very, I don't know, stylistically, I have like a style that I write and like I can write a fast punk thing and it's going to sound like this, but then I could slow that same thing down. Now it sounds like a country song that I wrote, you know, like it's like, it's still to me, I see and hear the similarities and with hip hop, you know, it's just getting outside of what I would normally do. Like, it's music that I can't understand because you, I can't make that music on a guitar, you know. And so I think that's why I'll listen to that and I can still, I can, like, a lot of people listen to like every single punk song. And I'm scared to listen to every single punk song because right now, I, when I come up with a riff, it's, I came up with it. Like, I, I think I came up with it, you know, like, and 
if you listen to every single punk song, then all of a sudden you're like, you're like, oh, well, that's this song. And well, it's this song, you know? And it's like, I don't want that to stifle me. I would rather find out later and change something or whatever. But like, yeah, I when I listen to hip hop, it's because it's nothing like punk rock. And now that punk rock is kind of doing hip hoppy things and hip hop's doing... Now that's changing. So now I guess I can't listen to hip hop anymore <laughs> when I'm writing. Uh, it's going to get in there. No, I mean, as long as I just know that whatever I'm listening to could possibly affect what I write, then. And that's why I stopped listening to like murder podcasts. And maybe that's not why. I, I stopped listening to murder podcasts because it made me feel uncomfortable. You know, the whole like uh, true crime stuff that was really popular probably still is, but years ago became popular. Um, I mean, there's some really well done and very, um, uh, very like um, addictive podcasts out there that suck you in. But I just found that thinking about death and thinking about people being murdered and, and kids being murdered, like oh, I just couldn't do it anymore. I was just like, no, mm. I'm going to stop that. The same doesn't happen when I listen to, like, news. I mean, there there is a limit where I don't like to listen to too much bad news all at once, and it's just, like, too much. But, but for the most part, news is okay. It's just podcasts. It's like the true crime podcast. And I, I don't watch a lot of TV shows that have tons of gore and, and murder in it. And I think... That changed at some point when I became wait, maybe as I grew older, as I uh, became a dad, as uh, as the world became a crazier place, or at least our view of it, because we can see more now with the internet. Um, I think the world probably is a a less crazy place for the most amount of people compared to like history, where more people were being tortured constantly you know but but that doesn't mean that that doesn't justify bad behavior now and bad treatment of people and humans now but yeah so <laughs> Ivan thanks for calling so hip-hop uh, you know it's changing things are always changing what I listen to is always changing you know uh, at the time I was probably listening to a lot of Dr. Dre, Snoop, Kanye, uh, Kendrick Lamar, Jeezy, uh, Young Jeezy, Jeezy, there's a lot of Jeezys. Uh, now I am, what am I listening to? I, I mean, in back then I was listening to Taylor Swift and, and um, I go through phases where I'll listen to Taylor and it's usually because she's a good marketer. She'll market an album. I'll check it out. I'll, I'll, I'll listen. I'll get hooked on a few things, but, um, Justin Bieber has a, a, the voice of an angel. Like I love his voice. And I would say that took a while. It took a while for me to see through. Like I wasn't a fan of his when he was like a little kid and driving Lamborghinis and being like kind of a brat. <laughs> and I get it. It's fun. You know, and, and he now recognizes that that behavior was ridiculous and, and childish and he regrets it a lot, but it's, it's chalk it up to being a kid. And, and he did have privilege, you know, being a, a rich little white, beautiful white kid. Right. Uh, he gets, he gets away with a lot, but but regrets it now. And it's like, I don't think that has anything to do with what I'm just talking about, but it, but it is kind of interesting. But um, Justin Bieber now, man, did you hear that he has, he's dealing with like a virus that, that paralyzes half of your face and it goes in your ear and it, and it can affect your hearing. And um, maybe he's better by now, by the time this is coming out, but it was that was like last month um he he had a video and it like one eye was like kind of being weird and then the other eye was like wide open and would not blink very sad very but 
also kind of cool that he did that publicly. I'm like, dang, like a lot of people would just try to like get over it and chill. But he had to cancel dates. He he had to cancel dates. So I guess they're like, let's just put this crazy filter on you and we can cancel these dates and people will think you had this weird virus and then you'll just be fine later. Like what if that, is that a thing that'll happen in the future where where you can just like, like do a cover up like if we need to cancel these dates but we need like a really good excuse okay um oh there's a virus um i I wish i knew the name of the virus um there's a virus and when you get it your hearing can be affected you know half your face gets numb and you, you get pain shooting pains in your face we can just like fake a video which you can do these days i mean technology right and nobody's gonna nobody's gonna trip they're gonna be like get well soon justin now i don't think that's what he did but that's the way my mind works that's what i go to i i immediately think what's the business angle on this and excuse me same thing with like kim kanye like i i'm team Kanye, I'm a fan of Kanye, and yes, he probably is a little crazy, but he's he's literally like my age or a year younger or older, I don't know, but he's like I see myself in him. I see him in me. Not it not that I think I'm the best in the world or a genius baller, although about some things I might be, but <laughs> what I mean is like that could be any of us, you know, having bipolar issues, having mental issues, but dealing with it almost in a public way, it makes me think, hmm, how are they using this to sell records? How are they using this to sell Yeezys, you know, or Kardashian, you know, how are they using this to sell, to get people to watch their show, like things like that, right? And that's very real. It's cynicism. Yeah, it's real cynicism, but 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 it's real too because we've constantly found out that we've been lied to and duped over the years over and over and over you know is it wrong if you if people want to be duped is it wrong you know it's like we go to the movies to be entertained we go to the movies to be to escape reality so part of what entertainers do is is escape people from reality so is it wrong I don't know. That's a good question. I'll leave you with that. Thank you guys so much for watching or listening. Uh, Appreciate you. Next week, might have a guest. I don't know. Haven't really thought about it that far ahead. But um, MXPX is working on... on, uh, new stuff and we are we're going to be getting ready to go play shows so we're going to be gearing up for that um like i said mxpeaks.com show info is there september 17th is the next show music for cancer fest gonna be a blast so many bands are playing that are amazing um go check it out gob unwritten law planet smashers uh let's go let's do this All right, so real quick, if you want to be part of the episodes, part of these voicemail episodes, call and leave me a voicemail at 360-830-6660. The number is in the show notes. So please subscribe to the podcast if you're listening on any any kind of app or anything like that. I appreciate it. Hit that like or love or subscribe button. And... uh, Last thing, but not least, shout out to Bob McKnight. Thank you, my friend. All right, peace out, you guys.